Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's your old Uncle Matt, and it's time for another live Q&A with your old Uncle Matt. I don't know what, yeah. Anyway, um, as you know, we're kind of modifying the way that we do Thursdays here, um, and we still want to have live Q&As. We still want to have, uh, we're still planning the power half hour, uh, although getting that to work is going to be tricky. Sometimes Chris looks like he's got to move move the camera here. So All right. C and D and okay. The the Chris is behind the uh, behind the camera working the uh, the the setup. It looks like it's to your lower uh, right, Chris. Lower right. There's a little. He doesn't know what he's doing. All right. So anyhow, Chris totally knows what he's doing. I'm just shining him on. Um, uh, we even have a new thing that we're going to start doing. Uh, it's called Matt and Chris take a guitar lesson. I think that's going to be a live. Uh, Thursday thing that we do. Our friend Stu Lippa is going to help us with that. I don't know how it's going to work, but it's going to be wildly fun. And um, uh, you guys can uh, take lessons that way too. More on that topic later. I've been wanting to do a bunch more videos, just kind of basic stuff, because people uh, constantly ask me, hey, you know, um, I, why do I get little zigzaggy things in my sanding? when I'm standing using a random orbit sander, or why do I, you know, little little things like that that will make your life easier that um, Chris and I kind of take for granted, but they're good videos, and uh, um, and I hope that you guys are enjoying them. Uh, we just did one today that was how to tweak a fender neck if it gets out of an adjustment. Uh, some people call it the UPS uh, adjustment, and um, that happens, you know. Guitar necks kind of get bonked around, and uh, um, if you have a Fender style guitar, you can kind of tweak it a little bit and make it back to, to normal. Uh, that's one of the beauties of the design. But today I want to talk to all my buddies who are guitar builders or people who just want to know more about the lumber that goes into um, the guitars that they play and they love. Uh, but if you're a guitar builder, this is going to be really important stuff um, because those guys who come to you or come to me and say, Hey, what about this, that, and the other kind of wood? Um, that you want to come from a place where uh, you, you you have a little bit of knowledge and, and kind of pass that on to them. I'm not going to do any myth busting today. I'm not going to talk about tone woods uh, or anything like that because I think barrels of ink have been uh, uh, used to try and solve that, and will never get solved. But we are going to talk about some of the the wood science and milling science that goes into wood. I've got a bunch of examples here, and I'd like to take your questions too uh, as they pertain to uh, wood suitable for building guitars. So I think that's a great place to start. Um, wood suitable for building guitars. People ask me all the time, hey, wouldn't it be cool to make a guitar out of all balsa wood or all ipe or take, think of the lightest, softest wood you can and the heaviest, hardest wood you can, and everything in between, guys have come to me and said, wouldn't it be cool to make a guitar out of that? Sure. The, um, uh, the, the fact of the matter is, and I've said this numerous times, um, woods that guitar players are familiar with are where you want to stay. So that's going to mean stuff like mahogany, maple, rosewood, ash, alder, ebony, uh, to a lesser extent, maybe stuff like um, basswood, poplar, um, uh, white limba, black limba. Gibson calls that carina. Let's talk about that a little bit later, too. Um, stuff like th those, those kinds of woods are accepted as guitar woods. Um, stuff like cherry and beech and uh, hickory and, <clears throat> to, to some extent, pine. Um, those are woods that, that you absolutely can build neat guitars with those, but guitar players, generally speaking, are not as familiar with those. So if they make a great guitar that sounds awesome, uh, they might kind of languish on the shelf a little while compared to those instruments that uh, uh, are built with, and I hate to say standard guitar woods, but let's just for the sake of conversation say standard guitar woods. Um, when you buy, when you buy lumber at the lumber yard, like if you, um, uh, if you go to guitar wood experts and, uh, or you go to Austin hardwoods or you go to Paxton hardwoods, 
some of the places that we go. Um, they don't sell lumber uh, by the by the foot. Well, they do, but they don't. Um, it's not like I need three feet of this board. Uh, hardwood is generally sold in units called board foot. So a lot of people go, well, what's a board foot? Um, a board foot is actually a measurement of volume rather than a measurement of length. Um, and it is 144 cubic inches equals one board foot. So um, uh, what that, let, let's talk about what that could mean. That could mean a one inch board by 12 inch by 12 inch. That would be one board foot. You could also have a two inch board that's six inches by 12 inches. That would be one board foot. So um, you guys kind of see where I'm going with this. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a volume measurement, not a, a length measurement or a sheet measurement. So you don't buy hardwood like you buy plywood, for example. You can buy plywood in a four by eight, four by four, two by four, or any number of other different sizes. Hardwood is not sold like that. Um, you can also buy molding in the linear foot. Hardwood is not sold like molding. Uh, it is sold in board foot. So board foot is something to keep in mind. Um, and if you go to the lumber yard and you're like, well, how many board feet is this? Um, board foot calculators abound on, uh, on the internet. You could just type in, board foot calculator and a bunch of those will come up and that'll kind of give you an idea of what you're about to buy when you go to the hardwood store. Um, because usually what you find is this is $8 a board foot. You go, well, how many board foot do we have here? Um, if you go to guitar wood experts, Dan will be happy to sell you uh, lumber in board feet or he'll be able to sell you uh, guitar specific wood. So like he won't go, all right, well, that body's this many board. He's already sorted that out. Uh, if you want to buy a, um, a body blank from Dan at Guitar Wood Experts, uh, let him know what you're looking for. He's not going to bother with board feet. He's just going to go, I know you want a guitar body. I know you want it this by this by this. And he'll shoot you a price out. Um, let's talk about um, how, how some, other, some other things peculiar to hardwoods. Um, you will see, you will hear numbers like, four quarter, six quarter, eight quarter, 12 quarter. And you're like, well, what in the world is, is that? Um, so that's, that's the thickness that they're talking about. Four quarter would be one inch thick. Uh, eight quarter would be two inch thick and 12 quarter would be three inch thick. Um, the problem is when you go and measure it, you go, well, Hey, how come this board is uh, uh, this, this is one and three quarters and it says eight quarter. Well, it's, it's not, um, seven quarter it's, it's eight quarter when they mill it. So when they cut the, the, the slabs off from the log, they cut it two inches thick as stuff dries and shrinks, it shrinks back. And sometimes you can also get lumber that is S two or S three. The S stands for surfaced and the two or three stands for the number of sides that have been surfaced. So if you get S3 eight quarter lumber, you're probably gonna be looking at one and three quarter inches or maybe a little bit less thick. Uh, let's talk about where to buy wood. Um, guys, if you have any wood needs, make sure that you go to someone who is reputable and that you can trust. We've all seen that hog shit maple that uh, is still sitting over there from that guy. And if you've never heard of the guy and he like demands cash and you you know what I mean? And, and nobody else has ever heard of him. Um, I would say don't buy lumber from that guy. Um, if you've got a guy that you, that you trust or if you've got a lumber yard where you can go and see it, if you're lucky enough, like Chris and I are, where we have a couple different lumber places here in town, we can actually go, you know, see and touch the wood that we're about to buy. Um, if we if we have something that we need, like a specialty item, we always go to Dan from Guitar Wood Experts because we've been working with Dan for years. He's never, ever let us down. He's a super cool guy. Check out Guitar Wood Experts. And if you look below, uh, you can get a little bit of a deal too. Um, let's see. Uh, is there any questions yet, Chris, before I uh, jump no. into this, this, this kind of deep dive into this thing? No. Okay. Uh, can you discuss 
how you come up with a board foot? What if, if you were to try and figure it out on your own? Yeah, yeah. I never, ever, ever just like look. Unless I go, this is this board is six inches, and by two inch, and that means for every foot, that's that's one board foot. I always bring a board foot calculator with me, um, which is really just your phone and board foot calculator. Um, and you can type it right in. It's the easiest thing in the world. It's, it's so easy, it's even I can do it. Times width, times height. Times height, yep. Divided by? The, whoop, 124. 124, 144. Uh, yeah, 144. 144, right. that's right. Yeah. Remember, guys, a board foot is a, <clears throat> is a measurement of volume and one board foot equals 144 cubic inches. Correct. Okay? That's one inch by 12 inch by 12 inch, or two inch by six inch by 12 inch, or three inch by four inch by 12 inch. You get what I'm, see where I'm going with that? Yeah. That's, those are all one board foot, okay? All of a sudden, I can't remember what a gross is. <laughs> 100, 100. 136. Yeah. yeah, 144. 12 times 12 is 144. Sometimes if you go to a lumber yard, they'll have like what, you know, how many board feet are in the board you're about to buy. That makes life easy. But always, always check, um, especially if you don't know. Okay. Um, a, good prices, by the way, for, uh, for wood uh, vary from state to state. So like we buy um, mahogany, we spend about eight to nine bucks a board foot. In some places it's considerably more and in some places it's considerably less. So, you know, if you luck out, you're in a spot where you can get lumber that's, uh, you know, you can get a really great deal on it. If you can't, you know, that's just, that, them's the breaks. Sometimes you eat the bear, sometimes the bear eats you. We, we're gonna talk about uh, Karina. And like, what the hell is Karina? Um, it, it's, it's a made up wood guys. Um, it, it, well, it's not a made up wood, but it's a made up name for white limba. This is a piece of white limba. Gibson would call this a piece of Corina. Um, it's, it's a, it's, it's kind of like a, it's, it's like mahogany. It's, it's, um, it's kind of this yellowish, uh, uh, grain structure, very similar to mahogany. I don't have any idea why Gibson called this Corina back in the day. Someone probably knows and they will they will chime in. You can probably hear them typing in the answer right now. But if you go to Austin Hardwoods or if you go to Paxton Hardwoods or if you go to Dave's Hardwood where you live and go, I want some of that Karina, they're not gonna know what you're talking about. Um, in fact, if you ask for white limba or black limba, they still might not know what you're talking about because it, you, don't, you don't encounter this stuff very much anymore. Um, one thing that I think is very important for guitar builders to realize is um, when it comes to the wood buying and the wood cutting and the wood using population, guitar builders suck hind tit, okay? Furniture makers use all the best stuff and they use all the good stuff and they're the reasons uh, the, furniture, the furniture industry kind of set the tone for how much wood costs and what wood is popular. So sometimes you can find white limba. Um, by the way, black limba just has more streaks of a kind of um, uh, uh, mineral brown streaks. It's not darker than this. It's just got some darker patches. But white limba, black limba, Karina, uh, all the same thing. Uh, let's see. And I think that's funny. Like um, we, we did a video once where we called, we called Poplar uh, Black Leary. And uh, we fool, tried to fool some people with that. I think we did too. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about um, why you would want to have a specific kind of wood. And remember, guys, <clears throat> the furniture industry sets the stage, not guitar. Guitar builders have little, if anything, to do with what kind of wood you and I are going to get. Guys like Paul Reed Smith can kind of do whatever they want. You and I can't do that. Um, so wood that we use is gonna come in one of three varieties, and I've got a couple of them drawn here. One is flat sawn. Flat sawn lumber has, let's see here, the grain going horizontal 
to what would be, in this case, the fretboard phase, okay? So it would be running parallel to the fretboard. Can we, can we get this in the, in the camera, Chris? This is a flat sawn board, okay? This is the most common piece of lumber that you will find is going to be a flat sawn piece of, this is actually five quarter maple that has been S4S, okay? So this started out life as a um, one and a quarter inch board it, when it was milled. Uh, then through the drying process and the machining process, it's machined down to where it's probably just over an inch. And this is the way that we get neck blanks from Dan at Guitar Wood Experts. Um, this one happens to be flat sawn and it looks a lot like this. A couple of things to note about flat sawn lumber. The grain goes, like I said, um, uh, uh, horizontally like this and you've got so you've got lines on the end grain and then the there's another another patch of grain that runs on the side that matches this horizontal grain and then this side here if this were a two by four this four side here would have would have horizontal grain the uh the length here would have horizontal grain and the um the top of the board has what i call cathedraling because it kind of looks a little bit like, like a cathedral. It, when you go and look, after you watch this, if you haven't already fallen asleep, you guys are going to go look this stuff up to go, Matt's full of crap. Um, and you're going to go look it up and you're going to find that um, there's no like hard, fast consensus on what stuff is called. Some people call this um, cathedraling. Some people call it other stuff. For the sake of this conversation, let's just call it cathedraling and move forward. Um, there is another kind of wood that guitar players and guitar builders generally get wrong, and that is vertical grain lumber that they call quarter sawn lumber. Okay, um, so if the if the I I never ever ever unless I know for a fact it's real quarter sawn wood, I never call grain that runs vertically quarter sawn. I call it vertical grain, and we're going to get into that here in a second. But you'll notice it looks a lot like this piece, just sort of upended. So you've got grain running running vertically, and then you've got the um, uh, grain running vertically on the, the four patch, and you get the cathedraling on this side here, okay? Um, so, uh, for example, and you'll never, you'll, you'll never, you'll very rarely find something that's this vertical, but this piece of white limba, has a lot of vertical grain. Chris, I, I don't know if we can get this into the shot. Can you guys see there? Can you see how that grain is more or less going straight up and down? This would be the fretboard side of a neck blank, and we want the grain to be going um, uh, perpendicular to the fretboard. That's where you would want to use vertical grain. Um, remember, furniture makers are the ones who... who um, uh, who get a bunch of this wood and they're the reasons that we buy wood like we do. Let's see if you guys imagine that this was the, uh, the MRI, if you will, of a log that's about to be machined and cut. Um, these are the growth rings here. Um, let's, let me show you what it would look like if you were going to make a flat sawn board, you would take a hunk from there, and you would take a hunk from there, and you would take a hunk from there, and there, and there, and there, and there. And you see all of these are, are mostly flat sawn chunks of lumber. Um, but you kind of cross hatch things so that all of the boards are flat sawn. Again, furniture makers want this, um, this kind of grain. If you, uh, that would be a flat sawn. If you, uh, have a log that you plane saw, or some people call it live sawing, you'll just cut it all in one, one chunk, just like this. And you guys will notice that here we're mostly flat sawn, but when we get to right about here, you'll notice what happens is we get a bunch of this vertical grain. That does not mean it's quarter sawn, it just means that the grain is vertical. And this drives me nuts because guys do this shit all the time. They're like, I got to have quarter sawn, quarter sawn, quarter sawn. This isn't quarter sawn lumber. This just happens to be vertical grain lumber, okay? 
in order for a log to be quarter sawn, it has to be cut into, yeah, you got it, quarters. If your log that you're about to machine to get vertically grained lumber isn't cut into quarters first, guess what? It ain't quarter sawn. It just happens to be vertical or it might be a uh, riff cut. We're going to get into that. Um, or it might be flat sawn. Um, true quarter sawn lumber, the log is actually cut into quarters and machined this wise so that the majority of the grain runs vertically. Um, there's another kind of lumber that we're going to talk about as well. Some people call it quarter sawn and some people call it rip sawn. And it is actually uses way less of the board than that. It actually uses, it's all material notches cut out of the board like that. So it has the, the, the most waste. Okay. Um, so let me show you why you would want to do that, why you would want to have a, um, a riff sawn or grain that is uh, at an angle to the piece. And you guys will see this when you go look. Okay, you would want grain going this wise. Um, the reason that you would want that kind of grain is so you don't have any cathedraling and you've got nice straight grain on all sides guitar makers don't necessarily care about that you know who cares about this guys who make chairs and guys who make tables and they want the legs to look the same on all sides um i've got a i got a hunk of maple right here these will eventually become um become neck blanks this is a flat sawn piece of maple, but I got lucky and I got a little bit of this riff sawn material in this board. You can see it here, okay? See how that grain is, 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 is pretty straight? And it's pretty straight on the other side too. And when we lay out headstocks, we're gonna lay this out such that we have as much of this, um, hold on, I'm gonna get to the other side here. We want as much of this angle as we can get. Now you see this isn't this is still a flat sawn board, guys, but if you just use that part right there, it starts to look a lot less like flat sawn and a lot more like riff sawn. Okay? And you can find this stuff when you go to your lumber yard and um and source source your materials. Um will you hand me that that yardstick there, Chris? Back in the old days, people would, would demand for musical instrument necks vertical grain because they liked the way it looked or, or even quarter sawn. But, but let's, just, let's just say vertical grain because they liked the way it looked and they liked the structural aspects of it. If you imagine this is a piece of grain, it is very easy to bend this way. And so this is, this is what, what people get told a lot on forums. You don't want flats on because it'll bend like this. Um, you want vertical grain because it won't bend like this. It, it's harder to bend. Well, remember, whether it's flat or, or vertical grain, it's easy to twist it along the axis of the, of the piece, okay? So we use truss rods. Um, truss rods will, will, will prevent this bow here. Most fender necks these days are, are made with flat sawn lumber. Um, if you can get vertical grain or, or even quarter sawn, you're going to pay a premium for it because you're going to use a lot, a lot more of the tree is going to be tur turned to scrap to get true quarter sawn lumber. Uh, or riffs on lumber. Um, so we'll fight this with, with a truss rod. And, um, and if you, if you uh, just like it and you're willing to pay for it, then that's cool. Um, if, you, if you don't want to pay the extra premium for it, it's not a big deal. Uh, like I said, the adjustable truss rod is a thing and has been a thing for many, many years. So don't, don't sweat the uh, vertical grain versus flats on um, unless you just like the look of it or you just want it. Because then, you know, happy meal for you. you. You just get whatever you want. Um, did we lose everything, Chris? No, we're still good here. All right. So um, he's bashing my computer. Bash, bash, bash. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, some other ways that you can achieve a vertical, a vertically oriented 
piece of lumber um, without buying and paying a premium for quarter sawn or vertical grain lumber. This neck blank here is obviously a um, multiple laminate um, neck blank. This has five pieces and you guys can see it started out flat sawn, but then I, I, I moved the, um, uh, the grain. And as you can see, it is now more or less vertical. So I have structured this neck blank to be, um, to be a vertically oriented piece of wood. Um, this is also cool because it has a lot of nice figure in it. And it's, you know, if you're into that whole Alembic thing, this is a cool, uh, a cool feature to have the alternating grain. Um, if, you, if you really like quarter sawn, but you don't want to pay for it, I would recommend making sure that you, God, I said quarter sawn. If you really like vertical grain, but you don't want to pay for vertical grain, uh, one way to go is get a good truss rod and a flat sawn piece of, of maple or mahogany, and then get a, 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 a vertical grain fretboard. So like this is, this is Chechen. Will you hold this into the camera, Chris? And I'll, I'll get the. Okay, so this is a cool way. Um, this is probably what you'll see <clears throat> more than anything uh, these days is a flat sawn maple fretboard and or, or mahogany um, and a vertical grain fretboard with a good truss rod. Okay. Uh, Chechen is? Chechen is also known as black poison wood. There you go, Diddle. <clears throat> um, yeah. And it is the good stuff kids go for. Hold on, I got I got to move my visual aids. Vertical grain and black poison wood. Uh huh. That's the that's the stuff dreams are made out. That's the hot setup. Yeah. So yeah, guys, words matter. So um, uh, try to try to incorporate vertical grain into your vernacular more than quarter sawn, because not every vertical grain piece of lumber is quarter sawn, and not every quarter sawn piece is vertical grain either. Sometimes you'll get this um, uh, this rift sawn style piece here. And when you when you go to start looking this stuff up, there's terms being used interchangeably from website to website. No one really seems to know, you know, there's there's no there's no mill spec for what <laughs> what this is. Um, at what point does a flat sawn piece turn into a uh, vertical grain piece? At what angle? Yeah, well um, so remember we, we showed you we showed you guys here. As you as you go, if you're if you're live sawing or plane sawing it's very easy to get this vertical oriented grain um, from sometimes from the same piece of lumber. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can have some stuff in the middle that's that's totally flat and some stuff on the ends that's more or less straight up and down. Cool. So guys, that's all I wanted to tell you about. But if you guys have questions, let's um I'd love to hear them. Uh, so is, is there such a thing as too many lamin laminations in a neck? Uh, well, to say lamentations. Le lament the lamentations, the lamentations of the neck. Of the right, is there such a thing as too many laminations? Um, well, you start to get into plywood after a while, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, <clears throat> you know, we made a guitar out of solid, well, it was just a bunch of plywood glued together. We even, we even glued the, the neck out of plywood. Um, uh, the X, the Kubicki X Factor base was I think like 40 laminations of, of maples and things and it looked like a hunk of plywood. Um, and those are those are awesome, awesome guitars. Well they're basses, but they're bass guitars. <clears throat> um, so I would say no, there's no there's no real downside to using laminations, but you're that's it's, it's sort of like making a guitar out of uh, butternut. It, it's not like, like people are gonna go, what in the hell is this? You know what I mean? Um, I think generally speaking, the fewer pieces of wood that you use, the, the more apt you are to uh, impress upon guitar builders that it's a guitar they want, unless they just happen to be, you know, really into Stanley Clark. So, and I think multiple laminations are cool, but we rarely, if ever, use them. Yes? Uh, what cut gets flame and quilt maple? All of it gets flame and quilt maple. Um, so for example, let's look at a couple of hunks. This piece is, um, is flame. And, uh, so you can see flame here, right? And you can see flame here. 
So, where's my where's my eyes? Ah. Wait, there's there's a, there's a billet of flame maple down there, Chris. Would you grab it? Under the yeah. So see, guys, there's flame right here. I think I'm I think I'm in the camera. I'm not sure. Dang. Yeah, you're. In the okay. Camera. So there's flame on this side, and there's flame on this side. So you see that the grain is, is going, is going, is flats on here and is vertically oriented this way. Um, and you get flame on both. So let me show you on a billet what that looks like. Yeah. That, that is my hand. <laughs> so this has, this has a bunch of flame on the flat part. See, so this is flats on and has a bunch of flame on it. Um, it will have flame. Well, you can't really see it. These are, well, you can see it here. See it there. There, these are, these are saw cuts, but there's also a lot of flame in this. Um, what you're really looking for is a lot of people don't want this cathedraling in their tops. They want this stuff. They want this nice straight grain, which you get if you use vertically oriented, um, material, whether it's a uh, flame or quilt. I got a hunk of quilt. I do. I do. I do. I do. So this is quilt maple. Um, this, by the way, is some of the maple that we'll be using in our build, a classic set neck. These are some of the things that you'll use for the tops if you come out. So there's there's quilting in this uh, the flats on part, and um, you can kind of. This isn't like this isn't like a, a ten top, guys. But you can kind of start to see it in this edge here. Um, the so the the quilt will the quilt or flame will happen on the the flat face or the vertical face. It's just do you want any of this the cathedraling? Generally speaking, the answer is no. Um, but I think it looks cool. So okay. Uh, bird's eye is one of those woods though that that uh, there's a few bird's eyes in this. There's some bird's eye in this, in this lumber here. As soon as you turn it on its side, all those bird's eyes go away and they start to look like flame maple, okay? So you'll see it, you'll see a few bird's eyes here. As soon as you turn it here, they start to look like they start to turn into flames, okay? All right. What else we got? I need to start drinking more. Yeah, get on it. Get down on it. Uh, is quilted maple too soft for necks? I think quilted maple is too soft for necks. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, well, how about this? Mm, no. Quilted maple isn't too soft for necks. I don't believe it to be stable enough for necks. Um, grain run out. The, the straighter the grain, the better the neck. Okay? As soon as you start to get... As soon as you start to get stuff like this um, in in necks, it, it it can turn bad really fast. So the select your select your lumber as with as little run out as you can whoa as you can get. And what I mean by run out is you don't want stuff if if this is the you want this to be a your strings to be in a straight line. You don't want grain going this way at an angle. You want it to be straight. Okay. All right. All right. And guys, you don't need to go to, you know, a, a, a fancy wood place. Um, if, you go to, if you go to Dan at Guitar Wood Experts, he, he's going to sell you a bunch of good stuff. But you can go to, um, uh, you know, a, a local hardwood supplier that specializes in furniture. And you can, you, it is possible to find good stuff there if you, you know, have one in your neighborhood and you want to check it out. By all means, do so. Anything else, Chris? Uh, I don't think so. All Not right. that pertains to wood. Okay, so guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. This was all about lumber. And I just wanted to uh, remind you guys that really the biggest, the biggest thing here is quarter sawn isn't, isn't ex mm -mm, vertically grain, <laughs> vertical grain lumber ain't always quarter sawn. And uh, so, so words matter. So 
stop using them interchangeably. And I, I'm, I'm just as bad of an offender as everybody else. So if you want vertical grain, great. Um, you're gonna pay a premium for quarter sawn material and it's gonna be very, very rare to find any quarter sawn material at a local hardwood supplier, even if you have a big hardwood supplier. So for example, there's a place here in town called Austin Hardwoods. It's gigantic. They have racks and racks and racks of lumber. They have a bunch of exotic stuff too. They used to have a section of four quarter, quarter sawn maple. And there were a few sticks in there. And they, it was, if regular maple was $5 a board foot, the quarter sawn stuff was 10 bucks a board foot. Um, so real live, honest to God, quarter sawn wood, very hard to come by. Vertical grain, easier to come by and is not necessarily quarter sawn, but like I said, quarter sawn, think about it. It says it in the fucking name. Sawn in, into fours, sawn into quarters. So, okay, you guys are smart. You know how, you know what I'm talking about. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Maybe we'll do some more of these. They're really fun. Maybe we'll do uh, one where Chris sits on the hot seat and talks about paint. He's shaking his head right now. Um, but that would be, uh, I think it'd be mildly amusing. So until next time, uh, by the way, next time's gonna be tomorrow. We have a super cool reveal. Uh, we have a we have two reveals tomorrow, right, Chris? Yeah. A two two part reveal uh, in two parts. Very cool stuff coming at you. We've got a fun show on Sunday with our friend Mike Learn. If that if we can make that happen, that's gonna happen. But until then, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that life is short. You might as well have a cool guitar. And if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see.